Welcome to the HVMN Podcast. What we do with our bodies today becomes the foundation of who we are tomorrow. This is Health via Modern Nutrition. A lot of people in our groups always ask, oh, should I drink bone broth, MCT oils, coconut oils, green tea, coffee? I, I think your point around bone broth perhaps not being ideal for triggering autophagy because as you know, there's amino acids and amino acid triggers mTOR, which is what is hypothesized to control or mediate autophagy. But for like uh, diabetes, it'd be perfectly acceptable yeah. because that little bit of amino acid is not going to do anything to you. It's yeah. not going to, it's going to have so little effect. Um, and same for a lot of people ask about Bulletproof coffee and MCT oils again. So you've got calories, but you've got very little insulin effect. So again, if your point is to try and lower insulin effect for weight loss for diabetes, hey, that's great. Then you are going to be able to take the Bulletproof coffee or MCT oil and still get like the lowering of insulin that you want. So keeping your goals in mind, you'd say, okay, well, that'd be perfectly fine for type 2 diabetes, bone broth. And typically, we'll use bone broth for more longer fast, 36 right. hours plus. Right. Green tea is a very interesting substance, and I've been talking a bit more about that uh, lately. It's, it's one of the things that has traditionally, if you look at traditional Chinese medicine, is actually one of the substances that has been always purportedly helpful for weight loss. And if you look at the studies, what's interesting is a couple of things. One is that Green tea typically has much higher levels of the catechins. So the catechins are the antioxidants and the flavanols, the compound that's thought to be responsible for the benefits. But they're at much higher doses. They're at like 10 cups a day sort of right. um, level, which most people don't uh, get to. But that's what the studies are at. And it shows that you can lose about an extra kilogram of weight with that. What the catechins do is they block an enzyme called COMT. And COMT is responsible for breaking down noradrenaline. So if you block the COMT, noradrenaline goes up. So what happens is that you get this activation of the sympathetic nervous system, and your energy expenditure can go up by about 4%. So not a huge increase, but significant. Essentially, when you're losing weight, a lot of the problems come when your, your metabolic rate is going down. So if you can take the green tea catechins and increase your metabolic rate, that's huge. The other thing that they showed in this study from just like 2016 as a randomized control trial is that you can, when you compare it to placebo, you get a reduction in ghrelin. So ghrelin is the mm. hunger hormone. And if you lower ghrelin, you have less hunger, which is exactly what people tell us. The green tea catechins. Interest, the, the green cat tea catechins. Huh. Yeah, absolutely. And it's very interesting. So it's like, that's great because that's the main problem with weight loss is that you have too much hunger and your metabolic rate is slowing. That's why people fail with weight loss. Now you have an all natural substance that people have been using for thousands of years that increases your metabolic rate and lowers your hunger. And that's what people tell us all the time. They drink green tea and then their hunger sort of goes away. I was gonna ask, caffeine's also known to be an appetite suppressant. So were they, con what, what, were they controlling for that or is it a... Yeah, it's an additive effect. In okay. fact, when you compare catechins and caffeine or caffeine alone, you get better effect with the catechins plus caffeine. So it seems like that they actually have a better effect. So what caffeine does is it blocks this other enzyme called phosphodiesterase, which also raises the noradrenaline. So they actually work through different pathways. And of course, normal green tea has both catechins and caffeine. You can decaffeinate it, but I don't, don't recommend it because yeah. if you want the benefit, you got to have both of them to get you know, twice the benefit. So uh, it's just saying it's interesting because in some of the studies they show that Asians actually get a better weight loss effect than Caucasians huh. because yeah, so you get an average weight loss of 1.5 kilos for Asians versus 0.8 kilos for Caucasians and the reason is that Asians have a higher incidence of this high activity CO COMT so that's the enzyme that's being blocked by green tea so if you're Asian and you have a lot of activity of the COMT blocking it is going to give you a better effect so it's like okay that's really fascinating but nevertheless 0.8 kilos is still a pretty good effect even for Caucasians but it yeah. may even be better for Asians which is huge because you look at the obesity epidemic in like China and, and stuff it's like massive like the because the numbers are huge over there. Right. The problem is that the dose of catechins you have to have is very high. You have to have up to like 10 cups a day, which isn't feasible for most people. And that's where we worked with peak tea. So what's interesting about peak tea, first, their tea is really great. I love the stuff. What they've done is they cold brew it and then they sort of dehydrate it. So it's basically crystals of concentrated tea. That's all it is. It's a whole food. It's not like um, what they do in the studies, which is kind of industrially extract the catechins and then add it to the 
tea. This is sort of a just concentrated cold brew tea. That's all it is. We have people to help with all kinds of stuff, but then when you're fasting, it's like, oh yeah, you're like out of luck. Like just do it, man. Just man up. And it's like, okay, well, <laughs> you don't do that for anybody else. We we create stuff to help them. So right. because nothing was available, we created this. I mean, bulletproof coffee is sort of this a, a, a similar idea, but it's 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 different. I mean, that's people use as a sort of fasting aid as well. Right. Um, they don't always say that, but that's essentially what they're doing. It's they're basically drinking. what they're doing. But I think the thing basically. I think kind of funny with bulletproof coffee is that you're eating like 500 calories of fat so it's just like you, you're, you're getting a lot of calories so i think at a certain point it's still like you're eating a lot of calories and you're just hard to lose yeah. weight if we're just eating like 3,000 calories of butter so i like i like the i like the tea because like, again it's like very caloric if there's not any calories probably close to close to nominal close to one thing that we saw that's interesting from a ketone ester perspective one of our products was a, pu- a paper published kind of actually near your backyard ubc university yeah. of british columbia showing that uh, acute use of ketone ester actually reduces the glycemic response so what that means is that a ketone ester versus placebo before a sugar test or oral glucose tol- tolerance test which is kind of a standard test to test for insulin res- resistance or sensitivity uh reduce the glycemic response i'm curious i think exogenous ketones have a role to play and this is this kind of goes along with the sort of fasting aids and sort of thing because it, it's not quite a whole food obviously but again right. it's something that may help along the way so there's a couple of things one is that the sort of properties of ketones have not been well appreciated for a long time i don't think anybody really looks at it ever so but lately with uh, sort of this interest in the ketogenic diet you're getting these really really interesting uh things popping up like oh hey you can treat seizures with it oh hey you can uh enhance athletic performance with it oh hey you can if you're if you get fat adapted hey endurance athletics may be particularly beneficial if you're bo- running your body off of ketones and the point is uh, that if you take a ketone supplement, you can get your ketone levels much higher, much faster. So the fastest natural way to do it is fasting. But if you take a, a ketone ester, you're going to get way higher, uh, yeah. you know, like right away almost. So is there some benefit to that? And increasingly, a lot of evidence says, yes, there could be some potential benefits. The ketogenic diet was originally described like hundreds of, like a hundred years ago as a treatment for seizures right and then it got lost with the development of medications and it took not a doctor but a film producer or you know this is the story of the charlie foundation so right. was the son of um, a famous hollywood producer had intractable seizures nothing worked none of the meds worked. he had all the best you know doctors and it took him researching the archives to find that this ketogenic diet would reduce seizures so he tried on his son and boom like the, yeah. all his seizures went away and it's like okay that's a great story why were the doctors not the ones to do this because they knew about it 100 years ago and then they totally forgot about it and it's like it takes a, a hollywood producer to tell you how to do your job like are you kidding me and i always think that it's very instructive because a lot of these things get met with skepticism by the sort of um, doctors, the sort of mainstream medicine professionals, but it's like when it works, it works. Then your job is to understand why it works. And ketones falls into that range where maybe there's some benefits to doing it, but if it works, don't just say, oh, that's quackery, because that's what everybody says. Oh, I mean, I got my fair share of that. Oh, fasting, that's just quackery. Now yeah. it's like, oh, you know, yeah, you learn of course about it, it now. works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like, of course it works. You're not right. eating, so your blood sugars will go down. It's like, that's not what you said four years ago, five years ago. You said, that'll never work. You're a quack. I'm like, but if you don't eat, you'll lose weight. They're like, no, you won't. I'm like, <laughs> are you not going to lose weight? Yeah. But uh, this is the same thing with ketones. So that we see in that study, what you see is that there's a benefit to the ketones in terms of reducing the blood glucose. And of course, this is one of the areas that I'm very uh, sort of uh, passionate about, which is type 2 diabetes. And hey, is there a benefit there? It's like, so it's very preliminary, obviously, but maybe you can use it as an adjunct in some way. Maybe you can use it in conjunction with the ketogenic diet or conjunction with fasting or some of these dietary mechanisms or even with your regular medications and maybe you can lower the blood glucose and is there a benefit so maybe the answer is yes we don't know all we can say is that it's it's worthwhile studying yeah the other thing that i think is very interesting about exogenous ketones and type 2 diabetics anyway 
is that you can measure this ketone to um, uh, glucose index. So as your blood glucose falls, your ketones should rise because your body is essentially switching over from burning glucose to burning ketones and burning fat. Well, this doesn't always happen in type 2 diabetics. So if your glucose falls, <laughs> your ketones don't rise. Then you feel so, like shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So you got no glucose, you got no ketones, you're, you're just feeling like crap. Yeah. Now, if you stick it out long enough, your body will eventually produce ketones uh, because it's not going to die. But in the meantime, it's not as easy as it could be. And we, we, we've studied this. We know that this sort of uh, glucose ketone index exists and that there are different slopes for different people. So normal people, glucose down, ketones up. Type 2 diabetics, a lot of them, glucose down, ketones not up. So what do you do? Well, that's where exogenous ketones could have a benefit. Maybe if you define the proper place to use it, you could say, okay, well, we'll give them ketones until they get into that ketotic state themselves, and then, and then they're going to derive Endogenously all the produce it, yep. Exactly, yeah. because yeah. they can't endogenously produce. So if you're trying to get into that ketotic state, but you're falling into this low energy state where you have no glucose, no ketones, you can bridge it with exogenous ketones until that fasting kind of kicks in and you produce endogenous ketones. And it's like, hey, that'd be a great solution. Uh, then you can get into there. Then you can start uh, start getting better from the diabetes and stuff. So, yeah. yeah, so many possibilities here. Um, and I think that that paper was just a you know a great first, first step, step saying, hey, yeah. Yeah, no, I appreciate your perspective there as, you know, someone who's looked at it clinically across 